Oh! Aha! Oh! To be fair, when I start, it stopped giving a fuck, basically. Me and Pools, right, every time I get into one, I have to see how deep the deep end is. Look, very summery, summery vibes. Yeah. Definitely Scooby Dooby Doo, Mystery Machine. If Mystery Machine splitted out a shirt. I'm the top shaggy. <laughs> Do you get it? No. That's such a bad dad joke. It is. Guys, welcome back to the Swing Up podcast. I'm Gage. I'm Olivia. And yeah, let's go over a few questions and let's talk about what happened on. Open house on Open Thursday. House Thursday episode. So it actually at the end of the episode, if you didn't see it, we got told as well um, via our WhatsApp like information thing that it's actually finishing airing and then the rest of the episodes are going to be on in September. So they're actually taking a prime slot. Yeah. So where Gogglebox used to sit on a Friday, now when it comes to September open house is going to take that slot no it's going to be after goggle box but goggle box is taking the break because goggle box is on nine till ten what and then open house is taking the 10 till 11 slot after goggle box because goggle box gets the most viewers on the channel four they're trying to push some viewership on so they're trying house. to like keep the viewers like um goggle <clears throat> box gets so many viewers and then they're hoping that then people are going to sit um, and go, oh, that looks interesting after Goggle Box, whereas it's on after ta Taskmaster, and I don't think Taskmaster on a Thursday night is a right audience. Is a right audience for Open House. Hmm. So that's why they're pushing it back because Goggle Box ended um, on Friday, and then so they're not back until September. That's why. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you listened to half of the message, didn't you? And you're like, yeah, yeah I don't pay okay. attention. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you it, can watch it all on 4 OD anyway. In more important news. I've got sciatica. <laughs> the worst case the doctors have ever seen in their life. He's been really struggling this week with his back, and so I haven't had my um, daily fix. Can you, I can't believe you're holding it against me. Like you're not getting your <laughs> daily dick down. You you know what? You turn into such a bitch when you don't get your daily hey. dick down. Tell me I'm mean. wrong. So mean. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh. Are you not as grumpy when you don't get your daily dick down? Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Last night, you was like, how's your back, Gage? I was like, it's feeling good. And you was like, looking at my dick, looking at me. Mm -hmm. Gave him some cocodamol, drugged him up. <laughs> drugged him up. It's like, tear this pussy up, Gagey. Tear this pussy up. <laughs> I've cut my dick. Yeah, he cut his dick. Cut my dick. Um, so, no other knife. Nothing like extravagant no. like that. But we do a certain something don't we do you want to go into it if you want you started, into it. You started so olivia on... to actually make her come is you have to use not only your dick but your hands as well i'm not talking about rubbing the clip this is how complex it gets so it's kind of one or two fingers in the butt but also one or two fingers or two fingers inside your pussy at the same time while my dick's in there rubbing the top but i've been biting my nails right and they're a bit jagged and I've kind of pulled out and it's scratched my dick. So I'm like, oh, I'm meant to be here tonight as well. So Just you've got remembered. a um, you've got a little um, injury. Yeah. Not only is his back hurt, he's now got a dick injury. So I am not happy. I've whatsoever. been through the wars. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, do you want to talk about our little... Um... Are we doing the question first or are we doing... It's not a question, it's just a story time. A story isn't time. It? It's oh, yeah. not really a question. We'll talk about Open House then. Do you want to talk about Open House? Yeah, so if you watched it on Thursday, if you've not already binge watched it like many of you have... Um... This was like our main episode, wasn't it? That we were like fully, fully in. in. Yeah. Like fully involved. I think I was in... I was in two different scenarios in... The, the like one episode yeah because you was in the orgy um so the way the open house is filmed what you see is not how it happened when we filmed it no because when you was actually in that orgy mm -hmm. with casey and tom i was actually in a threesome as a solo guy with another mm -hmm. couple yeah with katie and dan mm -hmm. that same night i remember you know 
We I, crossed paths. We crossed paths. <laughs> I came out all flustered and sweating, putting in a shift. You came out all ready to go. And you're and like, I'm like, where are you going? Where are you going? You was like, I'm going to an orgy. Where are you going? And I was like, you going to an orgy? And I was like to the producer, like, can I get on this orgy? Dude was like, no, you've kind of done your bit. You have to go back to your bunker bin. So I was fuming over that. So you had an orgy while I was playing solo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, last night, Ben and Jess came into the house. Mm-hmm. Ben and Jess, the nudists, um, which was um, an experience for myself to understand how they live their life. Yeah. And they picked us to go into the hot tub. They did, yeah. Um, so we were watching it, wasn't we? And we were like, this didn't... That kiss, like, in that hot tub just seemed to go on forever. I think they just played it on repeat, didn't they? The kiss was, didn't... like, three seconds max. Yeah, it was, like... Did we really kiss for that long? I don't think, think no. so, no. <laughs> no, but they seem to edit it yeah. and all good stuff. Do you know what, what does annoy me about open house editing is that they actually don't show you the amount of time you spend with people. Mm-hmm. And get to know them and, and have get like, to know a really them. good chat with them. And Yeah, because we when we met Ben and Jess, mm-hmm. you know, we fell in love with their personalities. They're they actually quite two funny people. Yeah. Um, and they were really kind of good to know because they live a different lifestyle being nudist than what, me yeah. and you do mm-hmm. um but they don't show you that part it's just like yeah we'll pick you yeah we're interested let's bang it doesn't work like that no, there's actually a had, process to it we had a lot of conversations of like our experience <clears throat> and their experience and what they're wanting to get out of things which hasn't been shown and it literally looks like we've spoken to these people for, for seconds. like seconds and gone yeah okay yeah but in the hot tub, we were there for a good two hours, I'd say. Yeah. Chatting away. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's TV. They don't want to show that, but they showed you the spicy bits. and. Yeah, we um, got naked in the hot tub, didn't we? And me in hot tubs does not work. I get so hot. I'm being in there for like hours on end. I love a good hot tub. <laughs> I'm like sat on the side at the end. Yeah, he was like, I'm so hot, I'm so hot, I'm so hot. <laughs> but yeah, so Ben and Jess came in and then they picked us to kind of experiment kissing because yeah. for a lot of people out there kissing is one of that one rule of you can do everything else don't kiss we want to keep it in between ourselves but yeah. twitter were popping off last night <laughs> twitter was popping off last night you know people couldn't get their head round. wait a minute you don't want to kiss someone else mm-hmm. but you want to basically dip your sausage in them mm-hmm. and i suppose it can be hard to get your <laughs> leave me alone it can be hard to um get your head around but for some people it works Mm. doesn't it yeah um but after the little hot tub scenario we were like i am really hot it was really hot that hot tub and we'd been in for ages and we were like shall we all just jump in the pool naked and that was fucking freezing and then we were like had this idea and we were like yeah let's do it and then (laughs) the the crew came in and went hang on a minute no no and they had to get cameras out, didn't they? And oh, they yeah. And I was like, oh, make it so, like, unnatural kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, they um, were, like, shifting cameras around so they could get us all jumping naked in the hot tub. That was one... Do you know that swimming pool? Do you know the deepest end? It's three metres. Yeah, it's really, really long. I remember it? being... First time we went in that pool, I was like... Me and pools, right? Every time I get into one, I have to see how deep the deep end is. I have to, like, you know, Go swim to, to the, the bottom, bottom, touch it with my hand mission comp- completed right it's just it's just a, a guy thing that we have to do all right <laughs> i jumped in that pool and i was like i'm gonna see how deep this bitch is and i'm swimming down and i keep swimming and i keep swimming even more and i'm like i'm fucking running out of breath here i was like what the fuck i couldn't touch the bottom no I could not touch the bottom whatsoever and do that point where you you've exhausted all the air at your lungs and you're like holy shit, I think I'm going to die. I nearly got to that point, but I did touch the bottom towards the end. Yeah. I don't think I ever even went in the pool, I'm not going to lie. It was, apart from jumping in the pool after the um, hot tub scenario. Yeah. I literally, that was the one and only time that I went in the pool. Hmm. But that's the thing with Open House. Because we filmed it in September, you had some days that were pissing it down and it were cold. But then you'd have one or two outbreaks of sun and it was nice and warm. So when that warm day came, they were like, guys, get to the pool. We're going to do some shots. And, you know, like you see on the advertisements where, like, you see me jumping into the pool and you see um, it's Kiki on the big unicorn inflatable yeah. and that person. That was me splashing Kiki. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, on, an, on a night, they're like, we're going to have a cocktail party. 
and where he dresses, but it's fucking freezing and they're like, guys, you can't look cold because it's summer. And it was like, please, <laughs> please. And then the fire in the middle of the, um, what's the, the... Yeah, in the cloisters. In the cloisters, that's it. And everybody's gathering like, around Trying to go fire. around and those like, guys, can't group together, get to separate. Like, we're fucking freezing! Yeah, it was so cold. Um, but yeah, then after the... Um, so after the um, hot tub scenario, it went straight into a social with um, Kirsty and Tom. Mm. Um, and I was literally, because I was sat next to them on the arm of the chair. In the yellow dress. In the yellow dress, but they'd literally cut out here because obviously I'm in the hot tub. Can't be in two places at once. Can't be in two places at once because I've just been in the hot tub and jumped in the pool. But then the feature in the orgy when you went up to Kirsty. But Kirstie. then, the f obviously, they're going to have to feature that, haven't they? You so. were a key player in that orgy, Olivia. Key player in the orgy. The amount of feedback we got of, like, you going up to Kirsty and then she's talking about body confidence and stuff and you're mm. like, look, I'm a mum. My body's not the same. It's changed yeah. and... And like that, that got cut as well. Like we, I literally stood there watching the orgy with them guys for quite a while, mm. talking to them just about my experiences. And especially like, obviously I've suffered with body confident issues. Like when we first started out or beforehand, I was never that confident with the way I looked or what I've got going on kind of thing. So I did like definitely- When, when did you stop giving a fuck? Were you quite early on into starting the lifestyle? Yeah, quite early on. To be fair, when I started, it stopped giving a fuck, basically. What, a bit of both. Um, so I always used to wear swimsuits and, like, had, like, the cover-ups on and things like that down at the beach and the pool. And I remember being at work on a trip as cabin crew and I was on a... It were a four-night Cancun. Oh, so I was sat on the beach with a cover up. It was like 38 degrees with a swimsuit on, a black swimsuit. I was boiling. And um, one of the guys was like, why have you not got your, um, why have you not got like a skimpy bikini on like everybody else? I was like, I don't own a skimpy bikini. Like, like what, why? And I'm like, I have no idea. Like nobody wants to see this and they're like and everybody then joined in the conversation and they're like nobody gives a fuck olivia like you're all here you're all having a good time like wear what you want to wear and be like be free be free and then we kind of started the lifestyle at the same time as well and my first like couple of meets i obviously were wearing like the, the, play suit. the play suits the um all-in-one bodysuit bra like thing that covers my tummy and because this were like obviously your problem areas and stuff that a lot of women struggle with um and i was like it kind of evolved from there other people finding you attractive other people telling you nobody cares apart from you kind of thing and because i know a lot of women have taken inspiration from you because mm. obviously your instagram post now is yeah you show yeah. the mum tum in lingerie yeah. you basically show the mum tum the mum bum the mum boobs all that good <laughs> stuff whatever you know other people have insecurities about mm. you're flashing it in swimwear and lingerie and mm. basically going if you don't like it i don't care this yeah. is not for you yeah this is this is this is for the people that find me attractive mm -hmm. and you know i remember i was going through like a lot of messages together at one point and from a lot of guys it was like I'm in love with you simply because this is what they were saying. I'm in love with you because you're just genuine and real. Mm. And that's what people look for. Yeah. Genuine and real. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're a little hot mama just now. You say it. Just, just own, own it. it. I think you can go through life just basically just feeling shit about yourself. And everybody has like, everybody hates a part of the body or they don't like something, they always want to change something. And you're gonna go through life like that, like going, oh, I'm not too sure about that. Or why worry, why care? Cause nobody else cares. We say this all the time about, you know, half the people don't get started in the lifestyle or even actually don't even chase the dreams because they are so concerned about what someone else thinks. Mm -hmm. Now, our philosophy is, is when you're on your deathbed, mm -hmm. is that person there gonna make any change to your life whatsoever? Because, yeah. you know, do they pay your bills? Do they provide you with your own happiness? Of course they fucking don't. Mm -hmm. Of course they don't. 
So why even take a slight concern of what they actually think? All right, they might gossip about you, but fuck them. Yeah. They don't control your life. You make your own happiness. So if you want to start the lifestyle, fucking start the lifestyle. Who yeah. cares what Karen thinks at the school gates? Yeah. With a fucking ginger fricker kid. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, so if you've got any ginger freckly kids, but. I'm gonna say, you're like ripping into kids, bless them. I think, like, I always say this like, everybody is beautiful and sexy and amazing in their own way, shape, or form. And there's always other people out there that's gonna find that attractive. And everybody's not for everybody. And, like, mm. and just, like, own it and just be happy in yourself. Yeah, I know there's uh, a lot of people in the DMs going, you know, I'm a plus sized lady, mm -hmm. I've got a mum to them, I've got mum boobs and all that good stuff. Like, first and foremost, for me, <laughs> gay G. That's on the telly, yeah. Do you like that? Do you like that? Shit. Oh, God. Coming out on Apple Music soon. Um, I prefer them body types. Mm -hmm. That's that's what you like. That is just what I find attractive. Mm -hmm. If you give me a mumsy mum, I'll tear it up all day long. <laughs> all day long. I do, though. I do. Yeah. And I think like a lot of people out there that have children or have a few extra jiggly bits it's fucking sexy mm -hmm. and you know what's sexy about it is when they own it yeah when they have the confidence to go i am what i am <laughs> and fucking rock it then you're like come here mama yeah. i'm gonna tear it up yeah and i've had lots of conversations with people and that was just a prime example of having this conversation with kirsty like you might you might not be attractive to some to someone but you might not be attracted to someone else like mm. everybody's got their own appeals and attractiveness and like i'm attractive to you that's where why we got together and we got married but s someone else might be like i don't like how tall dark and handsome you are kind of thing <laughs> don't happen often but you know i like a blonde i like a i like a a guy with ginger hair it's everybody's got their own individual like yeah you can't please everyone no. we said this didn't we from yeah. day one you could solve world hunger and someone will still have a problem with it. <laughs> you like saying that sentence, it's don't you? It's true. It's true. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. We're talking about attractiveness I'm just saying, levels. but you could do the, the best thing in the world and someone will go, charity mm -hmm. starts at home. Yeah. You're like, fuck off. Like, just keep your opinions to yourself. But, like, we've had that conversation before of, like, I'm not attractive, attra attracted, I'm not attracted to a person i'm more drawn into their energy and their the vibe the vibe going on and that's why you were a pain in the ass right when we try and find couples online olivia because i can look at someone and go they're quite attractive <laughs> off the basis of like yeah you've caught my interest let's start a conversation where olivia will go nah don't know yet so you're like Live. Come shall on. we message them shall we what what do you want me to do i, I don't know do what you want to do yeah <laughs> until i know them personally or like that's why i like um going to clubs and um going to events and things because i actually see them in person mm. i can't, can't judge it by just you, initial do you know what looks. and then obviously um swing hub as well oh aha oh we've got a launch date we have got a launch date i thought that was Woo! gonna be the first thing i thought that was gonna be the first thing that no, you're gonna talk I... about he's probably totally forgot about talking about it yeah because it's and this just... is the reason why we do the podcast exactly. for the actual app. <laughs> so yeah guys if you are listening watching whatever the 19th of june is when swing hub goes live fuck me so we actually get handed it we get given it, he's done it in the app store. No, we're not talking about that. We are going into, it's all the back end stuff though. No, no, but we still get handed it on Monday to give it a little bit of a test and make sure everything's hunky dory for the launch date. I thought you were going somewhere different, okay. No. Um, <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, we um, go live on the 19th and when we talk about finding people and mm -hmm. their, about their personality and their vibe is what's going to be perfect on Swing Hub is that you've got a timeline. Single guys, if you are watching this, listening to this right now, please take this advice. You have got a timeline. Do not waste that. Try to take pictures of your dick and put on your timeline. One, it won't work. It won't upload simply because that's not what the app's about. But take photos that show your personality. You like going dog walking, you like going hiking, you like 
a certain sport, you're into cars, you're into gardening, whatever it fucking is, use that timeline because trust me, couples and single women will scroll through that timeline to see what you're about. Yeah. Post often, post frequently, and find something where people can go, oh, he's into gardening. Let me send him a DM. Hey, nice tulips. Do you want to chew on my lips? You know, that sort of stuff. Tell me that was a good I, joke. That was Tell me that was a good right joke. joke. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, but it's all, so it's just like a best, like based on social media. Like you look at people's social media and you feel like you connect with them instantly because you know a little bit about them um, off of their page and what they've posted basically. So it's all based on kind of that and being able to connect before you even send it. But this is the thing as well. So with Swing Hub, like when what we're saying is, if you're gonna take any intimate photos or videos, put them in your friends only like um, picture album. If you're talking direct on Messenger, yeah, feel free to do whatever you want. When it comes to the public stuff, now what we have to understand is everyone's tired of the site that won't be mentioned because one, you know, yeah, there's a lot of single guys on there. There's a lot of dicks. There's people on there basically flashing. The reason why it's basically full trade, full of fake accounts and people that don't understand the etiquette is because everyone likes to show off the nudity on there. That attracts the wrong sort of crowd coming over thinking, oh yeah, I can easily get sex because these women just basically want it. Look at them flashing the fannies all over the site that we've mentioned. Where with Swing Hub, what we're saying is, look, we're changing that all around and we're saying, keep your intimate photos hidden and if you are public put your face pictures on your days out you know laundry pictures are fine all that good stuff but it, what it'll do is people will know then they can't just go on swing hub and for have a cheeky a, tug yeah over something for just a little just for a little, a little perv it's actually there for real people who are actually in the lifestyle to make real connections connect, yeah yeah yeah, it's a time now to make that perfect change for the app that we all want. Mm-hmm. That platform that we all dream of having, now is the time that we've got it. Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah. Finished? Never finished, but go on. <laughs> so, yeah, if you didn't catch that round, the 19th of June. 19th of June, we're coming. Monday, the 19th of June, put it in your calendars. Yeah, what were we talking about? We are talking about Open House. Oh, yeah. But I think we've um, we've Passed done. It. I think we've um, I think it's story time. Do you want to hear my story? Is it juicy? I've got deets. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you've got. Is uh, it going to clear my quite sciatica? Good, quite good deets. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to um. It's a long story, um, but it's a good one. And it's never this something like this has never happened to us, in that sense. Well, I don't know. Hmm. Um, but I just want to know, like, if it's happened to other people, because I think it's quite common, to be fair. Okay. Um, but yeah, are you ready? Mm-hmm. So, we were on holiday in Gran Canaria. Yes, a swingers holiday. Met this couple and spent the day with them chatting around the pool and decided to spend the evening with them and see what happened. Anyway, during the course of the evening, the lady of the couple became obsessed with my bisexuality and asking how I was bi... And how how bi was I? Okay. You got a text. I got a text. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was a bit strange she asking me that, as we had spoken about many of our experiences during the course of the day and thought my sexuality didn't need to be questioned. But anyway, I responded and told her about a few of my younger days being with women, but ultimately preferred a relationship with a man, and I just liked playing with women a lot. Well, she kept on going on about it and even a few of our friends at the bar picked up on it. So when she went to the toilet, I spoke to her husband and said, is everything okay? Does she feel uncomfortable with my sexuality? He replied, oh my God, no, she loves it. She loves a woman and does things to her. Don't worry about it. So I took that as an okay game on for when we go to the club. So we got to the club and started getting jiggy and everyone is naked. She laid down and looked at me, so I went to kiss her, and she turned her head away. Her husband said, oh, carry on, she loves it, in my ear. So I went down on her, and oh my God, it was so awkward. She froze, and I heard her say to my partner, I don't know what to do. 
by this stage i stopped because it was clear she wasn't comfortable and killed my female boner completely so her husband got hold of me and started kissing me and this woman then jumped on my partner and just decided to jump on him without any protection I stopped straight away and my partner stopped and threw her off. She was livid with us and I was so cross all the next day and that night and both were saying that they liked the bi female and then we got down to it, she definitely was not bi. So many women on the site that won't be named say they're bisexual or even bi curious and they really aren't. Mm. So, what do you think of that? A bi spy. A bi, bi spy. Spying it out, but they're not really bi. Do you think that like, people like, I don't know, this is just a thought that just popped in my head. Do you think that women say that they're bi curious, like wanting to explore other women? Do you think it's to make their guy happy? I think so. I've just had that thought like pop into my head, Do you know? You know what? Like, because we've played not like. It's it's between a, a bi curious like I've we've played with people that are like never been with a woman before but mm. a little bit curious and want to know test the waters and see if they like it. Grab your nipple. Give yeah, a give me a little. Yeah. Touch you down below. Yeah, but still like you don't know what to do like but then you just kind of like do what you do to yourself or like. But what do you know what's really funny though? Does. I think maybe we have come across it before because when we went to townhouse you know, we went back to the hotel room and did a little jiggy jiggy with our friends yeah jiggy jiggy with our friends you said how refreshing it was to actually play with a woman that is actually bisexual and that is definitely into it but do you think that's more of a dom sub situation it's a really confusing thing because like <sighs> i'm like we, obviously we've all gathered that i'm very submissive and i get really like scared making first moves and things like that and like i probably want to do something but wouldn't do it because i'm very sub and i'm waiting for the other person to do it or to tell me to do it mm. in that sense so is it a case of that or is it a case of they're doing it because they're wanting to please their partner or but when a... once you're in the middle of all the action olivia you change a little bit you get that little donut glaze <laughs> over your eyes and you're like pussy hunter yeah <laughs> And you're like, I want a bit of that. And you just go dive straight into it. You're like, mm, yeah, yeah, I've started doing that. But when we first started, uh, I don't think I was. No, no, yeah. definitely. I, do you know, if you look at it statistically, majority of the couples that come into the lifestyle always want a single female. Mm -hmm. One, because the wife is bi-curious or has had, you know, bi experiences before. Mm -hmm. And the guy's just like, I'm in it for the ride. Never sat with two chicks. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So, but as, so them couples, if you look at the whole lifestyle, I'd say a high majority are, you know, bi femme mm -hmm. couples. Yeah. So when you do get that couple, you know, you know, the guy's like, let's do it, let's do it. And the woman's like, mm, yeah, okay, I'm down for the guy, but I'm not so much about the woman. Do you think they're doing it, like you said, to please the husband? Are they doing it to please the husband or are they doing it to actually get a meet as well because yes. obviously like we've played with um couples that are not the females not by and it is a bit of a what do you do then like this is a straight it swap, is just a straight swap isn't it and yeah. it's kind of like or swapping backwards and forwards kind of thing mm. but if there's quite a lot of you in this scenario it's like really it is difficult to, it's hard to navigate navigate isn't it, isn't it? if it like but then again do you talk about are they actually inexperienced because if she jumps on her husband without a condom mm. not knowing wait a minute the etiquette is that you put yeah. on a condom yeah were they actually yeah. a little bit inexperienced playing maybe, the experienced couple yeah maybe saying that they're they've into it and been into it for a while and actually they haven't and maybe that was the first time and she was like froze and didn't know what to do and was kind of a bit overwhelmed in that scenario yeah you have no idea like what but, has happened do you but... know what as well shame on her husband the woman that would pretend to be bi because he should have read her body language gone yeah. she's not comfortable mm -hmm. stop or being straight up honest with them and gone we're just all in it for just a straight couple swap yeah 
There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people yeah. will be like, I'm DTF. And a lot of people, if you are open and honest with someone and going, actually, I think I would like, I wouldn't say I was bi, bi curious. I just would like to try it to see if I like it or not. Mm. A lot of people are like, cool. I'm down. Yeah. And if they're not, then, then they're not. But a lot of people, if you're open and honest and clear with each other, then... Yeah. You can make well, it you're work the whatever situation out you? Aren't you're you? setting the boundaries, aren't you? Yeah, but it's annoying when you do set the boundaries and um, everybody says, yeah, I'm fine. But like you says, that the guy's the guy was in the wrong going, oh, yeah, my wife's fine, quite clearly. Yeah, he just wanted to get his dick wet with yeah, somebody else. Yeah, maybe. Dickhead. But yeah, would you go on a holiday to Gran Canaria? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'd love to. I think it'd be on my bucket list to go around carrying because it's quite a big uh, community over there, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've always said, you know, if we had to open up uh, a resort somewhere mm -hmm. abroad, obviously because they're all over the Atlantic, mm -hmm. Cancun would be, oh, Cancun, Gran Canary would be an absolutely amazing place to yeah, cause obviously, have a high-end premium yeah, hotel, lifestyle we, hotel we there. We absolutely love temp um, Grand Meach's Temptation in um, the Dominican, didn't we? But it's just so far away. It's just not suitable for like people in Europe to kind of yeah, just get go access. for the weekend. Because yeah. a lot of Americans do just go for the like long weekend, Thursday hey, to Sunday. You never know. You never know. Swing up could have a swing up hotel in Grand Canary in the next five years. <laughs> a little resort. A little a resort. Very luxu luxurious resort. Premium. 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 <laughs> it could happen. Yeah. Hey, stranger things have happened. But then, constantly. obviously, the climate is so much better in the um, Caribbean and the. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. But, you know, I think there's always going to be a demand for something. This is what I was saying about the whole lifestyle in general. Like, you know, people think, oh, I'm going to open up a club and I can just put up a few beds and just kind of give it a lick of paint and it's going to be okay. And actually, what the lifestyle wants is so much more than that. Mm -hmm. They want to feel like, you know, they're in an environment that not many people can get into mm -hmm. it's the level of it's i'll say it again premium c mm -hmm. you know people want to go in and go wow this is amazing and from the outside you know people from the outside all the vanilla people look at the lifestyle and go oh it's all in cd clubs and mm -hmm. stuff because that's how it's been portrayed for the past fucking yeah. couple of decades where if you up the game and you have like the luxurious hotels and the luxurious clubs. Mm. The way it's seen is going to be totally, totally different. And do you know where it all starts with? An app. <laughs> it starts with the Swing Hub app. You can download your Swing Hub app on the 19th of June from the App Store. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> <laughs> But, it does, but yeah, but people does people people spend a lot of money going to like clubs and events and venues, and I think all they everybody deserves just a really good um yeah that's it people are wanting good, more good premium more premium 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 should we crowdfund a hotel in Grand crowdfund Canary crowdfund a hotel <laughs> go fund me page go fund me page <laughs> it's been our dream for years <laughs> yeah right yeah that's it that's it cool. short and sweet I short think that sweet. was a um, I've got nothing else for you no, that is it. That is pretty much it, guys. I know this is like a really short podcast because it's only 33 minutes, probably That's half That's not hour. a short podcast. It's, it's a not, good one. But do you know what? Like Bailey said two episodes ago, our timing shit. We've kind of, we've got a villain or alternative tonight. Um, we've got, obviously, a lot of work on in the background with Swing Hub. You want me to go cut the fucking grass and paint the fences <laughs> and all that good stuff. Uh, so this is like a last... Like, oh shit, we need to film a podcast and get out of there. I think we've been all right. We've been quite productive. I know, I think you've putting it down. It's a good podcast. Nobody wants to listen to us um, whinge on for 45, 50, an hour long. Believe, or not, believe it or not, they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. Do you know what really baffles me? Is me and you, how long have we been married for? A long time. Go back to the roots, yeah, in Leeds, how we met. Now, Look at us now. There's people on a Sunday. Yeah. This is the highlight of their Sunday night when it gets aired. Aww. They get into bed, like bang on the swing of podcast. You are crazy. You crazy the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, straight up. But it but is. Yeah. It is. It's amazing how far we've come, isn't it? And I think um obviously the next next weekend, obviously, mm -hmm. when the podcast comes out, that is gonna be what I would say not our final podcast, but the podcast before shit gets real. 
Yeah. And Gagey's baby is delivered. It went eight pounds seven. <laughs> took six hours. Um, I wish it did take six hours. But yeah, you know, that will be our last podcast before we actually get an app and mm-hmm. kind of start the journey. And we're going to be talking about Swing Hub more. Yeah. You know, I don't know how the podcasts are going to be the same. I don't I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But yeah. But yeah. yeah. Thanks for your little chat, your little summary. Summary. Entourage, boy. Oh, um, I want to do a new fist bump. New fist bump? Because on Open House, you know Kirsty and Connor? Yeah. They did a little thing with a little trigger finger and it looked sick. <laughs> it was like a fist bump like this. And then I think it was like a thumb like that. And then they pull it back and they do a little trigger. Yeah, but and then... we'll make one up and then you forget it. That's true, yeah. But we'll, <laughs> we'll keep it at this. All right. Simples. <laughs> Love you. <laughs>